Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect. My name is Pete and today we complete as requested the Pinnacle Station DLC. All the comments I received for the last episode were in favor of doing this next and so we will begin with the second and final DLC of Mass Effect 1 today. As you might remember, we left the last episode off on Asteroid X-57, but in between episodes I quickly went back to the Normandy, did a bit of selling and now we're here. And that means it's high time to get going and make our way over to the Phoenix system in the Arcus Row Cluster. We have been here before for Rex's loyalty mission, and so we don't have to do any planet scanning and can instead immediately dock on Pinnacle Station. Isn't that Commander Shepard? The human Spectre? Whatever. Spectre or no, it's always fun to see humans get pummeled in the simulator. Commander Shepard. Go pester Ahern, human. I'm on duty. Well, we could have certainly received a warmer welcome here, but apparently Ahern is the man to talk to, so let's do exactly that. Ah, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Pinnacle Station. I'm Admiral Taddeus Ahern. Well, nice to meet you, and what a lovely station you have. I'm glad I got the invite. Where do we begin? You'll be training in the combat simulator. After each round, you'll see how you fared against your competitors. So, tell us a bit more about this simulator. How does the simulator work? Talk to Tech Specialist Ockren if you want the technical explanation. Basically, it creates combat scenarios that allow our operatives to build their skills in a safe but realistic environment. So, I assume there are multiple scenarios to choose from. How do I try out a combat scenario? Go talk to Ockren over in the staging area. He'll set you up and let you choose a scenario. And who exactly will our competitors be? Who will I be competing against? The best of the best. Alliance operatives travel here from all over to try their hand at the simulator. The scores are tallied, and the winners appear on these monitors for all to see. Get your name there, and the entire Alliance will know about it. Alright, and uh, speaking of getting your name somewhere, do you run this entire station? So you run the station and the training here? Last I checked better than a desk job and a hell of a lot better than retirement. The facility is magnificent. It has all the technological marvels a commander needs to train the perfect soldier. The Turians give their advice. Every so often, I listen to them. Alright, fair enough. Thanks for the quick conversation. I think it's time to test out this combat simulator of yours. Thanks for the info. Carry on. Alright, there aren't really many people to talk to. We can only get a few lines of dialogue here and there. Don't worry, Commander. Ahern's tough to impress. And so our next person to talk to is Tech Specialist Okren. On the way over to him we can also quickly see the scoreboard, but we'll get into that in a moment. So you must be the famous Commander Shepard. I'm Tech Specialist Alud Okren, lead programmer on the combat simulator. Do you need something? I'm sure I have a few minutes before someone forgets their password and comes crying to me for help. Oh, you sure know how to make us feel right at home. What's with the attitude? I'm a technical genius on a station full of soldiers who only respect battlefield prowess. It's more than a little frustrating. But that doesn't mean that your job isn't important, though. You help keep these soldiers at their best. That's extremely valuable. I suppose so. It would just be nice to get credit for it once in a while. Okay, with that out of the way, I think let's get a bit more into detail about the simulator. So how does this work? It's a combination of holographic images and kinetic barriers. Holographic images help you see the objects, and the kinetic barriers keep you from walking through them. And the holographic aspect sure also covers the enemies, right? I assume the enemies are also holographic? No. Our operatives train in a simulator by killing real, actual people. <sighs> They're simulated. But I hear the kinetic slugs hurt just the same. Now, Ahern mentioned a few different combat scenarios. Can you maybe also tell us a bit more about that? What am I supposed to be doing in these simulations? That depends on the combat mode. We have time trial, capture, hunt, and survival modes. What's my mission in time trial mode? You and your squad must defeat all enemies as quickly as possible. The quicker you defeat all the hostiles, the higher your score. What's the goal in the hunt mode? Defeat as many enemies as you can before the countdown timer reaches zero. You get additional time for every enemy you defeat. The more enemies you kill, the higher your score. What's survival mode all about? 
Fend off waves of enemies for as long as possible. When the squad leader goes down, the mission ends. The longer you survive, the higher your score. What are the capture mode objectives? Capture all designated control points as quickly as possible. The faster you capture all the control points, the higher your score. Alright, I think that's enough as a quick overview. I've got it. Splendid. Let's jump right in and see how the real thing works. Let's try a new simulation. New competitors are restricted to low-impact missions till they learn the ropes. The infirmary was starting to complain. Which combat mode? Time trial, capture, survival, or hunt? And we'll go with capture since that is one of the easier modes. Capture. You have your choice between the volcanic or tropical courses. We will eventually do both, but let's start with volcanic. Set me up with the volcanic course. Fine. We give you some dummy grenades and metagel. If you try to use a real grenade, I will turn off every safety measure this simulator has. Alright, and we can choose squad mates for these combat scenarios. And for this first one, we will go with Liara and Caden to maximize biotic powers. Get to the point and keep it at all costs. Alright, now, capture mode. As the name suggests, capture mode is about capturing objectives. As you can see in the lower right corner, on this map we have three of them. So across the entire map, there are three of these yellow points that we need to capture. To capture a point, we simply need to get close to it and then stay there for a certain amount of time. That will begin the capture process, which is also indicated on screen, and during that process it is our task to keep enemies away. The enemies can slow the capturing process down or even stop it entirely, that is based on how many you also allow to get close to the objective. Without enemies disturbing you, it takes roughly 20 seconds to capture a point, and during that time you will have your hands full with enemies trying to rush you. And that is exactly why I picked Liara and Kaden as my squad mates, because having a lot of biotic abilities available can make your life a lot easier in capture mode. Now as you can see in the lower right corner, there is also a timer running, and that is the critical aspect of this scenario, because we do have a time to beat. That time to beat is 2 minutes on this map, so with roughly 20 seconds spent on capturing all 3 objectives, that leaves us with about 1 minute to navigate from one objective to another. Now as you can see, if you roughly know the layout of the map and where the different points are, beating that 2 minute timer isn't that difficult, even on insanity difficulty. You may have also noticed that I'm barely shooting at anyone in this scenario. That is simply because progressing rapidly across the map is much more important. The enemies here can't really do much damage at this point, while on the other hand Liara and Caden do enough to keep them occupied, and if that is not enough, we have biotic abilities galore. And so with that, the first round of capture very soon comes to a successful end. We are presented with the leaderboard next, and as you can see we have firmly secured first place, a whole 23 seconds ahead of our next competitor. Back off, Fidinos. I haven't done anything wrong. If you've tampered with government equipment, Brian, I'll have you thrown in the stockade. So it's this guy again, and he once again seems to have a problem. What seems to be the problem? Get lost, Shepard. This doesn't concern you. Fidinos is just mad because a human beat his record. Shut your mouth, hollow jockey. Brian says he scored highest in missions from multiple combat modes. No human's ever done that. He clearly cheated. Well, considering the fact that we just did the same and also beat you, by a landslide I might add, I would have my doubts about that. Would you change your mind if I scored highest on those missions? Tell you what, Shepard. You beat my record and Brian won't spend the rest of the competition in the stockade. Hell, if you even come close, I'll give you my weapon. And that seems like a deal we can agree upon. Also, because we really don't have any other option. Consider that record as good as broken. I'd wish you good luck, but I don't think that will be enough. I hope Brian has something to read. He'll be in that stockade for a long time. Alright, that is now our first combat scenario completed. And after this short conversation, we now also have a plan going forward. And I will fast forward through these dialogues from here on out. It's basically always the same conversation and it roughly takes 30 seconds. And that is time that we can better spend in the simulator. Get to the point and keep it at all costs. I have now chosen the second capture combat scenario. This takes place on a different map, but the overall mission stays the same. The time to beat is once again roughly 2 minutes. 1 minute 58 to be exact, but that's not that big of a difference. It can however still be argued that this combat scenario is a bit harder, because while we had three objectives to capture in the first mission, now there are four of them. 
And those objectives can be engaged in two different orders. The map here forms a pretty nice circle, and the four objectives that we need to capture are placed around that. From the starting point I decided to go up the ramp first, but it's also possible to go the other way and finish the scenario there. Just like last time we went with Caden and Leara as our squad members, once again to have enough biotic powers at our disposal. I have to admit though, at this point I'm pretty confident that Shepard would be able to solo this combat scenario. Immunity, shield boost and adrenaline burst should be enough to keep him alive for long enough, and if we need to we can also use Metagel a whole 10 times throughout this scenario. All in all, as you can see, at a high enough level the capture missions are fairly easy, but things will soon increase in difficulty. What remains is only the capture of one more objective, and with barely any enemies in sight, this one should be ours in just a few seconds. And that means we have now successfully completed the second combat scenario on Pinnacle Station. That means we once again get to look at the leaderboard, and just like last time, we have absolutely demolished our competition. And that means we have also put Vidinos firmly in second place. Keep up the adequate work, Commander. After a somewhat motivating line by Admiral Ahern, we will once again skip through the rest of the conversation. The main result of this conversation is that we are now set up with a hunt mission. For this one we will once again go with Liara and Caden, but bringing some more firepower is also a good idea on these missions. So things start on the subterranean level and let's talk a bit more about hunt mode. As the name already suggests, our goal is to hunt enemies. And to do that we only have a limited amount of time. And once that timer runs out, the combat scenario is over. Every time we kill an enemy, we get a few seconds added to the timer, so the core challenge is to kill as many enemies as possible before the clock strikes zero. Of course, just like in the previous combat scenarios, we once again have a leaderboard, and to put our name to the top, we need to eliminate more than 35 enemies. The enemies on this map are for the most part very flimsy Geth troopers, but once we get the kill counter up into the mid-high 20s, a few more interesting enemies will arrive. Um, by the way, you may have noticed we had one more talent point to spend on Liara earlier. I added Overload simply because I thought it was the best choice. Liara can now do some shield damage and she also gets a bit stronger against synthetics. And that will be especially helpful once we encounter mixed groups of enemies. Now back to the combat scenario at hand. As you can see, we're not having too much trouble cutting through the Gath, but getting that kill counter up to 36 or higher, that will still take a while. And by the time you have about the first 10 enemies eliminated, that is also when the timer is pretty much removed as an element of pressure, because at least on this map every kill gives you just so much additional time, by the end you should have a timer that is somewhere in the 5-7 to seven minute range. Um, by the way, running out of time is not the only way to fail this mission. You can also, well, kind of die. Like Okran said earlier, you can of course not really die in the simulator. But once Shepard takes enough damage, the mission will be aborted for you. That only goes for Shepard though, so you are free to sacrifice your squad members if you so desire. Now we have slowly reached the point where finding some more enemies to kill becomes the real challenge, and succeeding at that will be a core point of the next combat scenario. With the timer being where it is right now, we can waste a bit of time searching, but just imagine that slowly ticking down from let's say 15 to 20 seconds, and neither on the compass nor in your line of sight you have any enemies whatsoever, that sure has the ability to create a bit of tension. There are some strategies to avoid that, but like I said, I will go a bit more into detail when we come to the next combat scenario. Alright, and with that we have now successfully eliminated enough enemies to put ourselves in first place. We could of course now continue until we either run out of time or get killed, but I don't really see the point in that. So let's offer the Geth a chance to return the favors, and we can also help them out with a grenade, since all consumables that we use throughout the mission will be replenished once it is over. And since the Geth seem to be the patient sword, let's speed things up a bit. 
Okay, here we are. Shepard has taken enough damage to fail the mission. And that means in just a second we can take a look at the leaderboard. And here we are, with 40 kills in total, once again in first place. This time not ahead of Vidinos though, but ahead of Bryant. That was the guy we caught having a short conversation with Vidinos earlier. That's odd, Shepard. I've never seen the holograms cry like that before. Another piece of banter from Ahern and another conversation skipped. Now we get to probably the most frustrating combat scenario, and that is Hunt on the Volcanic Map. And for this very specific combat scenario, I like to have a squad member who can deal some damage. And that is why we exchange Liara for Rex. In the last scenario, you might have already been able to see that the assault rifle is the best weapon for killing enemies quickly, since biotic attacks for the most part only immobilize but don't damage. Still, having a bit of crowd control never hurts, but for this one we need someone who can hand out some punishment. And now let's get a bit more into detail about why Hunt on the Volcanic Map is by far the toughest of the eight initially available combat scenarios on Pinnacle Station. Now to begin with, the timer starts with 5 seconds less on the clock compared to the subterranean level. That however is of course not the main reason. The main reason is also not the fact that the number of kills required is a bit higher with 44 this time, and it's also not the fact that the map layout is a bit different. As a matter of fact, the elevated walkway is actually pretty convenient, as a simple throw off that walkway will result in an instant kill, giving us fairly easy bonus time. The real reason is the amount of bonus time we get for each kill. While on the subterranean levels we were able to get over 10 seconds of bonus time even for kills number 30 and beyond, on this map the amount of bonus time we receive is very quickly and very drastically reduced. While the first few kills also give us about 10 seconds each, once we get into double digit kill figures the amount of time added is already reduced to about 4 to 5 seconds. And it gets even worse. Once you get to roughly 20 to 25 kills you only get 2 seconds added, sometimes even less than that, so by that point the timer basically ticks down faster than you can kill. It has often been discussed whether or not this happens by accident or by design. I personally can't really believe that this was fully intended, simply because this combat scenario just sticks out so much in terms of difficulty, and it's not even one of the four advanced scenarios. Now be that as it may, the reduced time bonuses definitely present us with a tough challenge. Especially since we have to kill a few more enemies than before, and once we have reached the halfway mark, the clock pretty much ticks against us no matter what, so success in this mission pretty much becomes a question of strategy and not firepower. So with what little time remains, let's quickly talk strategy. First of all, I like to split Shepard from the group here. That allows us to cover a wider range of the battlefield and attack at multiple spots at once. On top of that, I highly recommend using the tactical HUD as often as possible. Whenever you get a kill, immediately press the HUD button and take your time and look for the next enemy. The timer will of course stop ticking down in the HUD, so especially near the end when enemies become a bit rare, this allows you to save valuable seconds that you would otherwise spend just looking for a target. Now I have to admit, even using these methods, it took me multiple attempts to succeed in this combat scenario. But as you can see in the lower right corner, we have surpassed the 44 kill mark. And that means we can now just let the timer run out and secure one more victory. And here's the leaderboard, and once again we're at the top, firmly ahead of Vidinos. Wow, Shepard. The only way your team could have made better use of their unique talents is if you'd gone into battle with your eyes crossed. So, with two capture and two hunt scenarios done, we are now halfway through. Now we only have the survival and the time trial mode left. And we'll start with survival on the volcanic map, and once again with Caden and Liara. The only thing you need to do is survive. So, welcome back to the volcanic map, however, this time things are a lot easier. Our goal in survival mode is pretty straightforward, it is to simply survive. Once again, we have a timer in the lower right corner, and that timer simply counts the seconds we manage to stay alive. The time to beat on the volcanic map is 1 minute 31, and all things considered, that is a pretty easy challenge. For our level 50 squad, the pirates on this map really don't pose too much of a threat, and then again, in survival mode it's much better to avoid confrontation entirely anyway. And that can be achieved by simply running around the map. 
The occasional dash here and there will put enough distance between you and the enemies, and even though more and more of them will spawn and they will all hunt you down, it is possible to survive for a long time this way. Then, if despite all of our efforts an enemy group does get too close, we can simply hit them with a biotic ability of our choice. A maxed out singularity, for example, keeps them flying for around 10 seconds. And that is more than enough time for us to get away and be long gone before they get back up. Um, by the way, one thing that I would be interested in, and maybe one of you has tested that already, that would be who the enemies will chase if you split your squad. So if we would, for example, position Caden and Liara in one corner of the map and run Shepard over to the other one, would the enemies still hunt down Shepard? Or would they go after Liara and Caden? Or would they split? I haven't tried that out myself. If one of you has an answer to that, please let me know. And now that we have successfully surpassed the time to beat, we can let ourselves get killed to wrap up the combat scenario. And here's the leaderboard, we actually lasted longer than I wanted to, and we once again beat Vidinos by a landslide. That's odd, Shepard. I've never seen the holograms cry like that before. With one survival scenario down, we have one more to go. This one will take place on the tropical map, but apart from that, things stay pretty much the same. For the squad, we will once again go with Caden and Liara, but as you just saw, we don't really need to use abilities all that much. On the tropical map, our time to beat is a bit higher than it was on the volcanic map. In this scenario, we have to stay alive for more than 1 minute and 46 seconds. But even with the higher time limit, it's not significantly harder than it was just a moment ago. One could actually argue that the tropical map here is easier than the volcanic map, since the enemies on the volcanic map were a lot tougher. Here we're just facing flimsy geth troopers instead of pirates, so if we were to choose the confrontation, that would favor us even more than it did on the volcanic map. But all of that is just hypothetical, we are not going for combat anyway, and as long as we don't have biotics against us, running away works with pretty much any enemy in the game. Um, by the way, what you just saw here is an interesting feature of the combat simulator, and one that I haven't talked about yet. If you're able to throw an enemy into one of the structures on any of the maps, and structures can be things like boxes, walls or ramps, but they can also be rocks like in this case, then the enemy will instantly die. At least that is my experience so far, but maybe that also has something to do with the strength of our biotic attacks. All in all, if you have a high level biotic in your squad, and if you have the option to throw one or more enemies into something hard, then feel free to make use of that, you will more than likely get rewarded. Now at this point, while we still have a bit of time, I would quickly like to address something. And that is why this video in the series came out a whole one and a half weeks after the last one. The main reason for that was actually editing. Pinnacle Station is extremely combat heavy, and combat in turn is what takes the most time for me to edit. That is because I edit out all the times I go into the tactical hut, and trust me that alone comes down to about 100 times in this episode. But doing commentary over combat is also sometimes a bit tricky, just balancing the amount of information with the rather fast paced combat that is sometimes a bit challenging. However, we have now more than beaten our required time, so we can safely let ourselves get blown to pieces by the rocket trooper over here. And here it is, the usual site, Shepard occupying first place on the leaderboard, with Vidinos as a distant second. Shepard, your accomplishments are an inspiration to knuckleheads everywhere. So, survival mode is also done with, at least for the moment, and that means we only have the time trials left. And for the first time trial, we will immediately return to the tropical map. Of course, we won't do so alone, and so the usual suspects can come with us. Now, the time trial mode can be a bit more challenging, especially if you're not that powerful offensively. The goal of time trial is to eliminate a certain amount of enemies. In our case, on this map, 25 of them, you can see the number in the lower right corner. The mode is called time trial because while we proceed to shoot up enemies, a timer is running as well. 
so the overall challenge is who can be the fastest at killing a certain amount of enemies. And that brings me straight to the strategy for this, as contrary to the first three missions where biotic attacks had at least some use, biotic abilities are your downfall here. One misplaced ability can throw an enemy at a place where you can't hit him easily, and from there on out you're digging a hole for yourself. Really, the easiest way here is to just go in guns blazing, trust the power of your assault rifle, and don't use biotic abilities at all. By the way, the time to beat here is a moderately challenging 1 minute and 20 seconds, which, like I said earlier, that can be a bit difficult, especially if your weapons don't pack that much of a punch, or if you're not too familiar with the map layout. That second point is also the reason why I like to save the time trials for last. By then, you should know the maps quite well, and you shouldn't waste time getting stuck somewhere. And here we are, with a time of 1 minute and 12 seconds we succeed, and that will once again put us ahead of Vidinos. That's odd, Shepard. I've never seen the holograms cry like that before. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. Only one more combat scenario remains for this episode, and that will be, of course, the second time trial. That will take place on the Warehouse map, a map that we haven't played on yet, so expect to play this time trial scenario more than once to get it right. With the squad, no surprises. While we could take guys like Rex and Garrus who hit a bit harder, our squad members really don't matter that much in the time trials, most of the damage will be done by Shepard himself, and while the occasional one-shot from Rex could definitely help us out, the real issue is navigating around the map and not firepower. As you can see, the video is getting quite long at this point, so thank you very much if you stayed the course so far. I really didn't want to split things up unnecessarily, and the first eight combat scenarios really fit together nicely, so even though completing all of them takes a bit of time, I thought it was the best solution to put them all in one video. Since the scenarios are always changing, it never gets boring, at least that's what I hope, and we will then have all the time to focus on the second part of Pinnacle Station in the next episode. If you're wondering, by the way, the time to beat here is 1 minute and 24 seconds, and depending on how powerful you are, that can once again be rather challenging. For a level 50 squad, however, with top-of-the-line Spectre weaponry, it is more than manageable. And with only two enemies and about 20 seconds left on the clock, I'm fairly confident that we will once again achieve success here. Alright, one last look at the leaderboard. With 1 minute and 8 seconds, both Bryant and Vidinos are behind us, and I have a certain feeling that Vidinos will not be particularly happy about that. Ocran must have changed it. Or... there's a bug in the simulator. You got lucky, human. Well, we pretty much decimated your records in every single combat scenario, and I would hardly call that luck. That wasn't luck. It was skill. Skill at cheating the system, maybe. I'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Bryant is clear. Keep your smug grin to yourself. I'm out of here. Out of here? Um, didn't you talk about a weapon earlier? Some sort of reward, I recall. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Oh, yes. The weapon. Let no one say that Vidinos isn't a man of his word. Now we can choose a weapon, sadly they are all crap compared to the Spectre weapons, so unfortunately we won't be able to get anything here that's better than what we already have. So since it doesn't really matter, let's just go with the pistol here. I'll take that pistol. Go ahead. Thing's a piece of garbage anyway. Enjoy the burn when it blows up in your hand. Alright, a few more lines of dialogue before we wrap things up. Way to kick some ass, Shepard. Thanks for your help, Shepard. I sure didn't want to spend my time on Pinnacle Station behind bars. And we are now going back to have a quick chat with Admiral Ahern. Nice work. You sure made an impression on Vidinos. Vidinos is pissed off, Shepard. Well done. You still got a way to go before you're the best, though. So, Admiral, how do you suggest we proceed? What's the plan now that Vidinos is out of the way? I suggest you go back in there and finish the rest of the missions. Prove to everyone that you're the best. And doesn't that sound exactly like the thing for us to do? We'll talk later. Good luck out there, Shepard. So, next time we will then take care of four more combat scenarios, one for each combat mode and all of them a bit more advanced, and who knows what else Pinnacle Station might hold in store for us. 
As always, leave a thumbs up if you liked this episode, and I can say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.